afternoon, my lovely friends. How are you all? Thank you for joining me in my studio today. It's been quite a hectic day. We've got so much going on. We're spinning so many plates, but I do always enjoy jumping into my studio and being able to craft. Uh, it's not very often I get the opportunity, so today I'm going to make the absolute most of it. I'm going to have a little bit of me time with you guys at home. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Creating Craft and I love anything to do with card making. Um, something that's handmade makes me smile, so I'm sure you're the same at home. So if you are watching on Facebook, don't forget to pop a comment below. Let me know about your thoughts about uh, the cards we make in the studio. Is it something you love? Is it something you're going to try? Uh, is it something you've tried before and you always do it and you are quite successful at it? We'd love to see your makes over on our Eureka fan page. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to so click the subscribe button. This ensures everybody gets some inspiration. And if you can manage it, click the bell as well and that will get you all the notifications when it comes to uh, what we're doing at Stamps By Me. You will get all the information you need prior to the show so you can get ready. If you are watching now, that's brilliant. Grab yourself a cup of tea and enjoy your time with us. If you're not watching now, please don't feel disappointed. The videos never go away. We have the live studio on YouTube, which stays there forever. And then we always do our quick pick videos, which is just the demonstration. So you can cut me out if you want to, and you can just watch the cards being made, which is also fabulous. So if you are either a working mum or have a busy life, you can just watch those little one minute videos. In today's studio, uh, I have been asked if I can revisit some of our older stencils. Uh, a lot of people have, two people in fact, have asked, um, I forgot what to do with them. So I'm going to um, show you what I do with them and what some other people have done with them and then you can maybe get them out of your stash and have a play. I'm also going to show you a couple of new products. If you are watching and you do want to buy the products, all you have to do is pop FBL into our search engine on our website and everything's there that you need. One of the products that I'm going to show you though doesn't go live until 6 o'clock tonight, so please be patient. We've just tried to get everything loaded on before Live Studio, but we haven't managed to get this last product on, so we'll pop it on as soon as we come out, so at 6 o'clock it will be available, that's if you want it. This is not a hard sell though guys, you might have something in your stash that will work with the techniques I'm doing today, so see what you've got and join in if you can. So I'm just going to show you the two products we have, so you'll have seen these ones, we had the lovely red and yellow um, pencil sharpeners absolutely flew out, absolutely shocked. Um, they are amazing though, so why I'm shocked, I'm not sure. But the shock of the 12.99 and the shock of how big they are, um, it still didn't discourage you. And I know a lot of you have used them and have messaged me or even personally rang me to tell me that all you've done all day is sharpen all of your pencils, so well done. But we have some more in stock. We have some more red ones. We have some more yellow ones. And we have some green and blue ones. Some of you were like, I want the blue one. So I made sure that when we reordered them, I got a few of every colour available so nobody misses out. So these are on the, on the website uh, as we speak. We did manage to get those on. So the second product quickly, and I, I like to go through the products quickly because I appreciate you don't come to um, watch just to see what's brand new. I know some of you do, but I appreciate a lot of you come for some help with your card making. So I do quickly whiz through them. So we have some fabulous new gems here. So I'm quite... Um, cheekily happy about these because it's not something we've ever done before but it's something I use all the time so we've got a couple of rangers here can we see these here we've got these are our raindrops so these make it look like you've got water sat on your card and um, so we've got the like moonstone colour which is this one look so it does look like you've got water and they've got a, such a big dome on there they're so gorgeous and it, you'll have noticed of late I've been putting a lot of gems around my artwork and a lot of people have been saying, blooming heck, it takes courage to do that. So I've brought out the ones that I use the most. So you know that the ones that I've brought you of what I found work with my cards. So I've got these one here, some like um, candy pink ones. They've got, they are like moonstones. They are lovely. So these are eight mil, they're quite big, but it's always good to pop a variation of sizes on your card. So eight, four, even a two if you've got the confidence, but they are quite small to deal with, but it does look really effective. And then we've got this like lovely sky blue. Can I just hold it up as tall as I can? There we go. You can see, you can see how big that dome is there. They're huge. Really, really lovely. I've got a feeling I'm going to go through lots of these. These are on the website. So in the, in the raindrop style, you've got three colours. Then we have our mini rhinestones, but they're a little bit different. 
um, in the sense that they have a little bit of a fleck in them. Now, whether camera pick it, pick it up or not, I'm not quite sure, but they have like a fleck in them. So albeit they look blue, on one angle they look black and on another angle they look aqua. This one's peacock, I don't know if you're picking that up there, but you can see them there. These ones are 144 pieces and these are four mil, so these are the ones that you probably use the most. The big ones are quite effective because they look like water, but these ones are probably the ones that you're going to use the most. So we've got peacock, we've got a minty colour, we have like a crystal clear colour which has got some silver in there, I don't know if you can see that there, and we have this beautiful pink. So these are pretty inexpensive, but they look beautiful on your cards. So we've got those colours today. We have got more, unfortunately, as I said, we couldn't get them all loaded on. So we will do our best to get them all loaded on on the next couple of days. So there's those as well. And we will be using those in Life Studio today, which is fabulous. Because if you're anything like me, you will end up with a pencil case that looks like this. Full of different coloured sized gems. Um, so you can just go through, see what matches your artwork and um, pop them on any time. The second thing I wanted to show you was a new stamp and die. So you can see here, I'll just move this out of the way. So we have a fabulous stamp and die here. Now, this will be loaded on at six o'clock. We ran out of time, unfortunately. But this is a fabulous large, like poppy, if you want to call it. Um, and it's a frontal one, which I drew when I was in Lanzarote. And now it's in stamp form, which is amazing. So you can do all the lovely things you want to do with these because you've got some beautiful open spaces. You've got the foliage around. And you've got some lovely, large sentiments. Enjoy your day, my lovely. Um, thanks for everything. Your friend, keep smiling. Have a great day. Love always and with love. You also get the coordinating die. Now the coordinating die does cut out the lovely um, floral element, but you get the word die as well, which is fab. So with love in a die, then the outline too. Let me just have a look at this one before I, oh, it's here. Before I tell fibs, I just want to show you. So we can see there, you've got the with love die. So that cuts out with love. It doesn't need the stamp, which is awesome. And then you get the lovely outline too. So you can create a lovely mat and layer if you want to. Just show you the stamp. Let's see if we can get a piece of white paper so I can show you. So you can see that's a top folding note card, so you can see how big it is. But you get your lovely sentiments which work fabulously through your artwork. Thanks for everything, that is my favourite. I don't know why, but I love the flowy font and the block font together. I think it looks really classy. So you've got Enjoy Your Day, My Lovely, also on there as well. Now, there is a secret to this one, okay? This is, you can buy this from us today from six o'clock if you want to pay the full price okay they're brilliant if you do however if you are a club member if you wait until the magazine's launched in a week or so you will get it for half price so so you'll get it rather than 17.99 it will be half price so it'll be available for you there and also you can get the coordinating die. Now that the dies are, are normally $17.99 as well but you also get that at reduced price as well. Not entirely sure how much this one is going to be, the die, but I do know this one is half price. So if you want to get it from us you can, if you want to get it from uh, your magazine or being a club member, I think it'll be about £8. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that one. But like I say, if you do want it from us you can get it from us at six o'clock this evening we just need to get it loaded on now, i'm just being given some information just one second it's in the tv magazine in september okay so not in a week in september um, we don't want to give you false information because you'll be waiting and waiting and waiting so september sorry for the confusion on that one so those are the stamp and dies and this is a beautiful one um, you know, as we always do our members' gifts, we always try and do something different. So when we were asked to do a magazine one, I've tried to do something, again, a little bit different, you know. I try. So let's get into our demonstrations. So I'm going to do the new stamp and die for the magazine first. Just going to move this off here. 
And then after that, I'm going to go back to some of our earlier stencils that I absolutely adore. Uh, we've had a few people ask about them, so I'm going to revisit them, should we say. And I know a lot of you bought those lovely stencils, so at least you know now if you want to uh, craft along with me, you can, because you'll have them in your stash. So I have this lovely geometric pattern. We launched it about four months ago. These are still available. I'm just going to pop it here on the top of this white piece of cardstock. Now I'm using the grid on my mat to aid me trying to get it straight. It is a repeating pattern so we should be able to match it up so it'll uh, oh, so it will um, fill the whole of this card. So just line it up nicely there. And then I pop my stencil on nice and neat. As straight as I can anyway. I'm just going to tack it down at the base as well so it doesn't move. And we're just going to go for some random colours. I am going to use my Generation Inks for my background. I have got a whole host of them here. So if you have got yours, I will tell you which I'm using. But for similar colours, you will have something in your stash from another brand. I'm absolutely certain of that. So normally I would go for pink and purple. But today we're going to go straight out of the box and we're going to go for aqua. 02 and orange yellow 04. So I'm going to do a bit of an ombre effect. So I just set these ones aside and what I'm going to do is so when you do an ombre you could do like um, left into the center and then across into another color you can do top to bottom. I am going to do top to bottom because I think it's a little bit easier on the eye. So I'm going to start with the orange yellow 04 and I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So just a little bit of circular motion. It looks like you're not actually getting much ink on there at all, but I am. I'm getting plenty on there. So nice even coverage. This is just a piece of white cardstock, nothing fancy. I would have liked to use my watercolour card, but I'm a little bit tight when it comes to the stenciling. I think white card does do the job. don't want to use my good stuff. So I'll just set this one aside, and then I'm going to use the aqua, aqua one. And I'm going to work from here up. Just gently. I am put, popping my hand here to stop myself from getting over this line because I am going to do a little bit of a repeating pattern. So if I pop my fingernails there, it'll stop me from maybe getting it over that line. Work it up. And then when you're happy you've got enough colour down, all you need to do then is remove the stencil. Can we see that there? So we've got a nice pattern coming on there. And then all we're going to do is pop it back down, repeat it back up if we can. Patience is key, she says. Oops. There we go. Pop it back down and try and hold it back in place and then we can fill our recess here. So just bring this colour around and we'll get this other area filled here. And then you'll have like a lovely seamless pattern. Hopefully I'll be able to get rid of that ugly line. If not, that's where my um, stamp will hide. But it's lovely in the sense that you can have a lovely seamless pattern down your artwork if you want to. Get a little bit more on there. And it doesn't look that dark when you're actually just doing what I'm doing now. It's not until you actually remove it you realise how dark it is. So we'll just go with that one. And there we go, look, we have a lovely pattern going down there. It's 
so I'll just set this one aside so the brushes I'm using are our new brushes they will be coming soon um, we are still in the process of putting them through the mill to ensure they absolutely work uh, I'm not going to show too much on on air but as soon as um, they are signed sealed and delivered I will let you all know about them so there we go beautiful pattern on there so let's move on to our lovely stamp so I'm just going to grab the trusted Eureka just set that aside and what we're going to do on this one is we're just going to stamp it out in a colour first I'm just going to grab some white cardstock from my stash, just one second. She says from her stash she's got the biggest pile of white cardstock you could possibly imagine. Here we go. So we're just going to stamp this one out as you would everyday stamps, pop it in our Eureka, hold it in place, we're going to die cut it so it doesn't really matter where we stamp it. So I'm going to stamp this one out in a dark grey, well she says dark, it's more like a pencil sketch and it's our, just move that out of the way, I don't want to mark my card, it is the DGO3, let me see there. I'm just going to ink this one up. And we'll stamp it out. Now the great thing about our generation inks is once they are dry they are permanent, which is fab. So you don't get the bleed if you want to watercolour, you can do that with these. I'm just going to stamp it one more time. There we go, how lovely is that one? So what I'm going to do now is let's get this die cut. So I'll just move this from here for now because I don't know um, if we'll be using that one again. So I use my Cut and Boss, it's the one that I, it's my preferred machine. But um, this will go through your snap, it won't go through anything lower than your snap though. So you must have a snap or upwards. Um, to die cut this actual one. Just going to hold it in place with some tape. Uh, just to let you all know as well, I know a lot of you have been waiting patiently, our magnets are back in stock also. So if you've been missing a magnet or um, you've been after extra magnets, they are now available, finally arrived. So I think they'll be under FBL as well for you to pop them in your basket if you've been waiting for them. Thank you for your patience. So just hold that in place like so. I'm going to run this one through. Well, there we go, it's crowned, <laughs> just fell out, which is great. So there we are with the put this like lovely embellishment. So you could actually cut this in half and you know build something really big by tucking another one here, another one here, and creating the appearance of a bouquet if you wanted to, make it as big or as small as you wanted to. If you 
Now you could paint it in bright red, it would make a lovely realistic poppy. Just take this off this card. Because if I don't, I will lose the dye. Pop it back on there. There we go. So for this one then, I'm going to make this quite a bright card today. And because all my kit and my stash and all the lovely stuff that I love to play with, most of it is packed in the car still. Um, if you didn't know, I had a retreat at the weekend, so I've ha literally had no opportunity to move, move my good stuff from one place to the other. So we're going to use my Generation X, and do you know what? It's not a bad thing. They are a fabulous paint. Um, and because we've had so many new products, they've sort of like been pushed pushed to the back but I'm going to bring them back to the forward back to forward today so we can um, use them I know a lot of you have got these so I'm going to use orange and the reason I'm going to use orange is because it is a complementary color of these two it's going to make this pop and I'm going to also use let's just see what else we've got going on here a yellow I think shall we go for yellow orange and yellow let's go for these let's see where it takes us I'll also pinch a green too for our leaves What's the worst that could happen, hey? So I always find that if I keep my background to the side when I'm colouring, I can see if it's going in the right direction. Yeah, so if we leave this here, I've got my water and my lovely paint brushes. So I'm just going to go in and it's normal cardstock, guys, nothing fancy. So let's go in and add some dimension on here. I'm just looking for my lovely paint palette, which is just down here, thank goodness. See how frugal I am with my paints. I never wash them off. They last so long. Never want to wash them off. So I've got my paint palette here. So I'm just going to pop some of the yellow onto my mat. And a little bit of the orange. And some of the green. Now, these... Um, watercolour inks are already diluted to a lovely consistency so it's just a case of you adding a touch more water to get whatever thickness you like it's not like your tubes where they are really thick and sit there for weeks and weeks to reactivate that these are like already hydrated with water for you so I'm going to do it's not going to be um, details painting I'm just going to go loose with this one so I'm just going to add some water to this petal here And we'll just drop some of the yellow in, let it work its magic. Whilst that's um, moving around on the card, I will drop a bit of orange into. Not all over, I'm just going to let it do its own thing. So I'm wetting the petal. I'm not doing two connecting petals, they will bleed together. So just be mindful of that. I'll drop some yellow in. Clean my brush so I don't contaminate. Pick up some orange. Just let it go where it wants to go. Next one, go with this one here. By the time you've not done the connecting petals, by the time you get to the very first one you did, it probably will be dry by then dries quick in here, I know that with all the lights, so I have to quite be quite quick, should we say. So before I pick up another colour, I always clean my brush not to contaminate, and then that's when you get the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the differentiation in the petals, because um, I've not used the same colour on my brush, I've dropped dropped it in once I've cleaned it. So I can't really do another one because they're all connected on there. So let's move on to our green. So I'm just going to wet that one. Now you could actually paint direct. There is no right or wrong way. Whatever you do at home, if it works, stick with it. Don't just do something because I'm telling you this is how I do it. If you do already do something at home and you get great results, I would just stick with it. Don't try and change it just for the sake. I 
going to wet all three of these. Let's just go for it quickly, hey? And always remember, when you're watercolouring, it always dries back lots, lots lighter. So don't frustrate yourself by putting it on and trying to take it off with a tissue. Try and have the courage to, you know, stick with it and see how it dries. If it doesn't dry as light as you'd probably like, you know you won't do it next time. And it is only a little bit of card, isn't it? So, right, let's get these other petals done. So I'm just going to wet this area here. So on these other ones, I'm not going to drop any orange in. I'm just going to go absolutely yellow. And then that will give my flower some dimension without even thinking about it. So if you don't understand light and shade, you're okay this, if you do it this way, because it instantly does it for you. Right, it's coming together nicely. We've just got a few more to do. Oops, you see that was still wet, so that bled. That's not what to do. So make sure the petals are dry. I appreciate I'm in studio and I'm trying to get through it because I've got lots to show you. But you at home, do make sure they are dry. You'll get a better result than this anyway. <laughs> so let's do this one here. If you've got the courage to do this in red, it looks stunning. Oh, nearly there. You see how it looks like a flower with lots of texture in there and you've done nothing to it? All we've done is um, separated the colour really, a mix of yellow and orange in the one and then in the other one we've just dropped the yellow haven't we so and you could go in on that and build on that if you want to do it's looking like a little bit like a wilting sunflower but um, you can you can build on it so I'm just going to pop a little bit of green in the centre here so let's dry that one off with our gun just for speed, normally I would leave it, as you all know. So already it's dried two shades at least lighter. At least two shades lighter. So to give this a little bit of a finish, I'm just going to go over it with our Gossip Sparkle pens and I'm just going to add some sparkle to all of the each individual petals. This just gives it a clear sparkle over the top, nothing, nothing too in your face and the fabulous thing about these is you don't get that nasty silver undertone either. I'm just going to pop it on there too a little bit. And there, we're good to go. Right, so let's just tidy our station and get this card constructed. Now, in the sentiments, you've got some really huge sentiments, and you need to be mindful of that. There are some small ones too, but the big ones are fabulous for creating a focal point on the card. So let's just get our top folding note card here. So let's adhere this one. Let's just see if straight onto our top folding note card like so. So I'm just going to use whatever I've got on my table for speed, which is Kalal. Just make sure it's not blocked. There we go. And we'll stick this one flat. So 
So I have some exciting news to tell you all. Tomorrow I'm doing a Facebook Live at one o'clock. I'd like you all to join me. I have something fabulous to show you. Some brand new stuff. Tomorrow at one o'clock. I will pop it on Facebook. Like I said, I just haven't had a second as of yet to even catch my breath. So as soon as I sit down and catch up, I will um, pop it on Facebook just to let you know. So I'm just popping a couple of pads behind here. So me talking, I've distracted myself there. I'm not going to stick that yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp our sentiment. So always remember to stamp your sentiment before you put your embellishments on. It's difficult to do your sentiments once you've started popping 3D pads behind things. So I'll just move these out of the way. Just pop this into my Eureka. So let's have a look what we've got going on. I know exactly which one I want to use, but I can't use the same one all the time. So, so you have to think about where you're going to pop your embellishment first. I'm going to have to go for a big one because that's just me. So I'm going to use thanks for everything on this one. It is different to the one I have been using though, I promise. I'm just going to pop it in this bottom corner here. And we'll stamp this one out in black. Let's do it one more time. There we go. Simply in black. Just pop that back on my carrier sheet. And then we'll just stick our embellishment on. So you can go. I always like to hang my artwork over the edge of the card like so, but I appreciate it's difficult for envelopes. So I'm just going to go with that there. So I'll stick that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some of our lovely new gems. I'm just going to use some of the lovely water drop moonstone colour ones. So can you see there, they, they aren't clear, they're, they're like a like a misty colour. You can see from the side there how big they are. They're really lovely. So if you want to create like a water drop, or quite a big water drop should I say as well, on your cards, these are fabulous. So I'm just going to use my blade for this one. So they are um, flat back and they are... Um, sticky on the reverse so you can stick them to your artwork and not have the problem of glue splodging and things like that. So I'll just lift these up a little bit, get a bit of dimension on there. You see as soon as you pop them on your artwork they pop from the page, I love them, love them. Now I wouldn't overcrowd um, three at the most on one project personally. Um, because I think they're, ni they're that nice, they're going to push away from your artwork. So I'm going to use a large three there, and then I'm going to revert to our lovely um, rhinestones, the little four mil ones, and this is where I completely overload, because I just think it looks, they look gorgeous. But personal, it's all down to you as a crafter and your, your choice. These look like water also when you pop them on. You could pop some on your cards as well. And I will finish and embellish it properly for the picture for Facebook because this is sort of like a bit boring for you to watch at home. I appreciate that. So I'm going to leave that one as is. You see that there? You can see the dimension on there. 
And what's really lovely now, that I have done that card from absolute scratch, guys. That's taken me, what, is it 20 minutes? I don't know, I'm not watching the time, to be honest. But, you know, straight from scratch, not a bad effort at all in that one. So that is the lovely um, stamp which will be in the magazine in September. Um, it's available from us as well. It will be later this evening if you want to get it from us. Um, but you can wait if you are a club member from Crate and Craft. Um, so let's move on to our second demonstration. And we're going to revisit some of our older stencils. So let's just set this one aside. Now I'm not going to make cards. I'm going to do a couple of variations of stenciling for you. So I have just some pieces of white here. I say I'm not going to make cards. We'll see if we've got time. So I've got two pieces of white here. I'm just going to pop them in the centre here. And we're going to go back to our lovely watercolour lamination style stamp. So I've got one layer in one. I wasn't sure which ones you were referring to. You said some of our first um, stencils when I've had some customer messages. So I've gone back to some of our first. Fingers crossed. Um, these are the ones that you were referring to. So first of all, let's do this lovely layering one. So I'm going to show you how. If you are not a stamper or a die cutter, you might be a stenciler. You might already have this. If you have, if anybody has made some cards using these stencils, will you pop them on the Eureka fan page for just to, for other people? Because uh, I appreciate the look daunting, don't they? But if you've already made one, um, just to show, uh, it might encourage people to actually use them. So you get two portions on here. You get your solid part, which is this part, so you'll do that in one colour. You move your stencil over and you do this part in another colour and you get the most realistic watercolour stamp or uh, painting you're probably ever going to get from a stencil. They are really, really lovely. So let's pop this over this corner like so. Now I am going to stencil it, I am going to hold it down with some low tack tape just because um, I don't trust myself not to make a boo-boo live on air. So I am going to go pink and purple for this one. So we've got Fuchsia, FUO3 and DPO3, they're both in the same collection of these two. So let's just get a piece of scrap. I'm getting um, I'm getting closed into this studio. It's getting smaller and smaller every week. Just make sure my brush is clean-ish. Um, so I don't know if many of you are aware. We're currently in the process of moving as well, officers. So there's lots going on. We're doing our best to make sure everything's right for everyone. So I'm just going to use, let's just go for this pink here, look. So I'm just going to go in this solid part here. So you can, there's a few ways you can stencil. You can stipple, you can brush, you can twist. I don't think there's a right or wrong way. Um, just go with what works for you, I would say. In all, to in all them crevices if you can. And you can add pen detail yourselves if you want to on these uh, and make it make yourself look like an artist. So that's that. Let's peel that one off and you get this like shadow what, what's going on. But before I create the second part, I'm going to do it over here as well, over the top. Now what should we do? Let's go straightish on this one. I'm going to do the same here. We're going to create like a background. So I'll go for the same colour. I'm filling that space. Make sure I've got enough on there. Perfect. So I'll put that one away so I don't end up using that one. I 
and you get this sort of like background. So how I line it up is I pop it back on as if it was there and then all you have to do is move it over. Okay, shall I do that again? So you just leave it as is and you can see that this goes into there, these two go into there, that goes into there and that goes into there. But the easiest way to line up, there's no difficult twisting, all you have to do is go from there across. Can we see that there? So I'm just going to go for that one. So I'll hold it in place. We'll get some purple. I'm just going to push that lovely purple through. And then we get this lovely look. And that is really, really pretty in my opinion. It's little to no effort, beautiful for sympathy cards, beautiful for uh, people who like hand-painted things. So for this one then, exactly the same concept. Pop it on as if you've just done it and then just move it over. get this beautiful like background on there and how different it looks just if you chop out the colour and swap the colour. So let me just show you how this then comes to life as a card. So you could use die cut words in the centre if you have those, we've done plenty of those. I'm just going to pop um, one of the larger sentiments in here. Pop it straight in the centre. I am going to slightly... No, I will go centre. Go a little bit higher. Make sure it's straight. And I will do this in black and then what will happen is it will pop from the page because of the colour in the background. A great wedding invite. And I would pop some sparkles around there from our new collection, probably the clear around there to make it sparkle, and I'd add that to a maybe a black top folding note card. So that's one. I'm, I will pop it on a card for photography for the end of the show so you can get a clear understanding of what it's going to look like. So that's demonstration number two on there for you. So let's look at one of the last ones I wanted to show you. And it's this lovely one here. And this time, instead of, it's not a layering one, you just stencil through this one. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it all different colours. And it's relatively easy to do. So I'll just set that one aside. So let's get our next piece of card. So let's just pop this straight in the centre. I'm just going to secure this one down because we're going to use a few colours. So let's see what colours. We've got our orange. Let's go for a pink again. Pink again. Have we got a green? We've got an aqua. We'll just go with this because it. I don't really think it matters what colour you do it in. Um, I think you'll get a lovely... A lovely look regardless so I'll just take the thick off that brush there so let's go with let's go with pink and I'm going to do this head here this big one I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the colour so rather than the traditional like circular motion I'm just going to spot in this little area where I think there would be a flower head it's telling me there would be something there a flower or something so I'm going to go with the idea that it's a flower head and go with it so I've got pink in that center area there make sure it holds and it looks like we've got maybe a little bud going on here so I'm going to swap it out for the yellow so we get a yellow bud I'm just going to try and spot in there as well 
Is there any other buds? That might be a bud there. So I'm going to go with a bud for there as well too. And I think the rest might be green. Or oh, in our case, we're going to go aqua because I don't have a green to hand. So clean that off. Get rid of the thick. See if I have actually got that aqua is not going to show. So I'm going to try. Let's just see what happens here. So I've got a green reinker. So pick up some of that green. I'm just going to stencil through and get my green on there. So if you haven't got the ink pads and you have got your reinkers, funny enough this works. So I'm just stenciling through those ones that are suggesting there are leaves there. And up that one there. And this edge one. Make it just a little bit greener. And then when you take it off, fingers crossed, if we've done a good job, you end up with a beautiful flower that looks as if you've actually painted it. And you know what? I'll show you just quickly. You see this orange here? It's gone into those leaves a little bit there, can you see? But it makes it look more realistic simply because of the autonomal colours in there. So don't be scared if one colour goes into the next. It still looks fabulous. It's just, it's just amazing. So if you leave it like that, you can leave it like that. But let's say you wanted to add a bit of detail so it looks like you've painted and sketched it, we can do that. So all you need to do with that then is grab a fine liner pen. If we have one to hand, I hope I have. I haven't. Oh dear. Oh, let's just see what this one is. That's too thick. Okay, if I had a fine liner pen, I would add some detail to these leaves. But again, I'm just going to show you, when you add the sentiment, how this instantly comes to life. So on the other ones, we've sort of like put the sentiment to the side, haven't we? And sort of like edged it. I like my sentiment through my artwork. I think it looks more realistic. I think it looks more handmade. So I'm just going to go straight in the centre there with, with love. Now, I would do this in gold embossing, but I'm running out of time. So I'm going to stamp it in black, just for speed. It just shows you how lovely these sentiments work with these stencils. How lovely that looks. Now I am turning away from the camera just quickly just to be cheeky and see if I have actually got a fine liner because it is really a lovely effect if you've got the courage to go ahead and try it. Just one second ladies and gents. I'll just... No it's not looking promising. What a shame. Never mind. I will add some detail with a fine liner pen. You can also add some gems if you want to. Oh thank you. I have some fine liner pens here which is amazing. Thank you. So I'm just going to add some detail to this leaf here. So it's a suggestion that there's a leaf there, doesn't it? But it's not actually precise. So I'm just going to pop a curve on there, look. Did you see that there? And I'm just going to bob a little line in centre to say, that is a leaf. Now you absolutely know it's a leaf. Can we see that there? So I'm not painting in, I'm not drawing in all of the leaf. I'm just actually telling you, yep, yeah, that's a leaf. How you see it will probably be different to me, but yep, yeah, that's a leaf. So I'll add this one here. So don't be scared to add the detail. Thanks for getting me those, Tim. Uh, don't be scared to add the detail because they are there to encourage you to maybe try these things. But if you're not wanting to be an artist, you're not wanting to be a colourist, these stencils really do take the hard work out of it for you. You can create some amazing looking handmade cards truly from just a stencil and a little bit of ink so I'll just show you them all quickly on set 
So don't forget, tomorrow at one o'clock, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live. I have some things to show you. And I'm back with you in the live studio on the Wednesday. Also, with some other new things to show you. And um, then I'm on TV on Friday and those times will be confirmed for you. Excuse me. I hope you've enjoyed today's studio and I hope I've answered some, some people's questions with regards to revisiting old stencils. If you do want us to revisit any of the older or newer products um, here at Stamps By Me, we are, just let us know, I, I will absolutely do my best to revisit products that you've maybe not touched or had your mojo or had the courage to get out of the box. So I will see you all tomorrow at one o'clock and then Wednesday live in my own studio at four o'clock with some more inspiration. I hope you have a great day, whatever you're doing. Take care, everyone. Bye.